Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 4.4 of Mastering Parallel Programming series, we are diving deep into the world of efficient exception handling within tasks. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel Programming using PFX that is Parallel Framework Extension Libraries in c -sharp. If you have watched my previous videos, you probably remember this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further and learn Efficient Exception Handling within Tasks. Efficient Exception Handling in Tasks. Exception handling is crucial in any programming scenario, but it becomes even more critical when dealing with parallel tasks in c -sharp. So today, we'll explore some best practices and techniques to handle exception effectively. Okay, so let's start with the common scenario. Let's say we are waiting for a task to complete using its wait method or accessing its result property. When doing so, any unhandled exceptions are conveniently rethrown to the caller wrapped in an aggregate exception object. Okay, let's try to understand with the help of examples shown over here. Here, I have written in divisor equal to zero. So, here what we are doing, we are declaring an integer variable named divisor and initializes it with the value of zero. That's what this statement is doing. Then I have written task in calc equal to task.factory.start new and here I have written lambda expression. And in lambda expression, basically what it does, it calculates the result of 5 divided by divisor. And here since divisor equal to zero, then this operation would normally result in divide by zero exception. Then what I wrote? try and catch block over here. Try block, what I'm doing, I'm just trying to accessing the result property of this task. That's what I have written calc.result. If the task completed successfully, its result will be written to the console. However, here we are going to get an exception. Those exception will be thrown over here. And that exception we are going to catch into the catch block. That's what I have written catch aggregate exception AEA. So why I wrote aggregate exception over here? Because the task class wraps exception thrown during its execution in an aggregate exception. And then what I am doing, I am just printing inner exception message into the console window with the help of console.writeline state. That's what I wrote, console.writeline aex.innerexception.message. What it is going to get printed? Attempted to divide by zero is going to get printed into console. Now let's see the another scenario where we are going to handling single exception. Let's say we have try block and catch block. Try block, I am going to use two tasks task 1 and task 2. So that's what I have written where task 1 equal to my async method 1 and where task 2 is equal to my async method 2. What we are doing? We are going to use task when all method. So that's what I have written await task dot when all task 1 comma task 2. So let's suppose either task 1 and task 2 gives an error. Those exception we are going to catch into the catch block and we are just printing inner exception message into the console window. So if one of the task fails then we are going to get the single exception. In this case it works fine. But let's suppose if more than one async operation fail, then task dot when all will give you visibility only of the first one. That's all. It is not good practices to use simple try catch block. How we are going to handle that? If we are going to receive multiple exception from different tasks, that's where we are going to see this example over here, where I have written handling multiple exception. Okay, so here I have written task aggregation task equal to null. So here basically what I am doing, I am just declaring a variable aggregation task of type task and initializes it to null. That's what I have written task aggregation task is equal to null. Then I have written try block. So it begins a try block to encapsulate the code where asynchronous tasks are going to get executed. What I have written where task 1 equal to my async method 1, where task 2 is equal to my async method 2 and here I have written task dot when all task 1 comma task 2 and I am assigning all those things to the aggregation task. That's what I have written aggregation task equal to task dot when all task 1 comma task 2 and then I am just awaiting this aggregation task. That's what I have written await aggregation. So this line asynchronously waits for the aggregation task to complete and the await keyword allows the program to asynchronously wait for the completion of the task without blocking it. And then I have written catch statement. That's what I have written catch exception ex. So if any exception occurs during the execution of the asynchronous task within the try block, it will be caught by this catch block. And then what I have done, I have written if aggregation task question mark dot exception question mark dot inner exception not equal to null and aggregation task dot exception dot inner exception dot any. So this statement basically checks if the aggregation task has any exception if it does, 
it iterates to the inner exception. So for that, what I have done, I have written for each. So this loops through each inner exception contained within the aggregation task aggregate exception. That's what I have written for each where inner x in aggregation task dot exception dot inner exception. And here we can tap all the exceptions thrown by the different type of that we have executed inside this try block. So overall, this code snippet asynchronously executes two tasks concurrently, waits for both tasks to complete using task dot when all and handles any exception that occurs during their execution. If the exception occurs, the code iterates through each inner exception or custom exception. That's what we have written this catch statement. Important points and tips for exception handling in task. What are those important points and tips for exception handling? Number one, when waiting for parented task, the waiting process includes the children task and any exception occurring in the children task will be propagated upwards. Okay, so let's understand it with the help of example. Let's imagine you have a big task to complete, but you can break it down into a smaller task to make it easier. These smaller tasks are like children of that big task. When you are waiting for the big task to finish, you are also indirectly waiting for all the smaller tasks to finish. Now, if something goes wrong with one of the smaller tasks, let's say it encounters a problem. That problem doesn't just stay with the small task it gets reported back to the big task. So when you are waiting for the big task to finish, you are not just waiting for it to complete successfully, you are also keeping an eye out for any issues that might have happened with the any of the smaller tasks. Okay, so let's view this in this way. Let's say you are responsible for a group project and you have assigned different parts of the project to different team members. When you are checking if the whole project is done, you are also checking if each team member has completed their part without any problem. If someone encountered an issue, you need to know about it because it affects the overall completion of the process. So that's what this number one point talks about. Number two, handling exception in detached tasks and tasks with timeouts. So these scenarios require a special attention to prevent unhandled exception from crashing our application. Okay. So let's imagine you have a different task running in your program, sort of like separate workers doing their jobs. Sometimes these tasks are not directly connected to the main flow of your program, meaning they are kind of detached and work on their own without the main program keeping an eye on them. In other cases, you might have tasks that need to finish within a certain time frame. If they take too long, you don't want your program to just hang forever waiting for them. So now here is the catch. If something goes wrong during the execution of these tasks, like an error, or a program, the main program might not know about it. These errors could silently crash your program, causing it to stop working unexpectedly. So, when you are dealing with this detached or timeout task, you need to pay a special attention to handle any problem that might arise. You want to make sure that if something goes wrong, your program doesn't just give up. Instead, you should have a plan in place to catch any errors and deal with them gracefully so your program can continue running smoothly. That's the number two point. Number three, another vital tool in our exception handling toolbox is the task scheduler dot unobserved task exception event. By handling this event, we can intercept unhandled task exception and provide our own logic for dealing with them. Preventing application crash. Okay, so here let's imagine you are working on a big project and you have many different tasks assigned to different people. Sometimes one of those tasks might run into a problem, but no one notices it right away. A task scheduler dot unobserved task exception event is like having a system in place to catch those unnoticed problems before they cause bigger issues. So here is how it works. In your project, you have set up this system. Let's say the task scheduler dot unobserved task exception event to keep an eye on all of the tasks. If any of them run into trouble, but nobody catches it immediately, the system will notice it quietly in the background. When it spots a problem, it doesn't just ignore it. Instead, it lets you know about it so you can take action on it. So this event gives you the chance to handle the problem in a way that won't cause your whole project to crash. You can decide what to do next. Maybe you can fix the problem on the spot itself or gracefully exit a particular task without affecting the entire process. In simple terms, we can say that it's like having a safety net for your task. If one slips through the cracks, this safety net catches it and gives you a chance to fix it before it causes bigger trouble. So now we talked about the important points and tips for exception and let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo number one, efficient exception handling in task. So the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named efficient exception handling in task demo that has program.cs file. Program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system dot threading no task. Then there is a class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. First of all, I am just printing this statement into console window. What I am printing, 
I am printing demo number one efficient exception handling in task with the help of console dot write line state. Then I have written in divisor is equal to zero. Here divisor is of in data type. I have initialized with zero over there. Then what I have done? I have created one task with the help of task dot factory dot start new. Inside that I have written lambda expression. What lambda expression it is doing is just using five dividing by divisor. The divisor value over here. The divisor value is zero. Five divided by zero. It is just going to throw the error. What error we are going to get it when we are going to access this result. Property of this task class. But I have written this calc dot result into console dot write line statement in try block. So here I am trying to access it and then will be throwing that error. That error I am just going to capture into the catch block. That's what I have written aggregate exception AEX. Here what I am doing I am just printing inner exception. How I am going to print? I'm just going to use AEX dot inner exception dot massive property and it's just going to print exception into console window. That's what I am just writing console dot write exception AEX dot inner exception dot mass. Finally I am just waiting output get appear into console window with the help of console dot read line state so that's how this program is constructed let me go and execute this program and show this output okay so output got appear into this console window. see demo number one efficient exception handling in task got printed then exception attempted to divide by zero this is the exception that we have captured into the catch block got printed with the help of console dot write line state. now let's see the demo number two efficient exception handling in task so here what i'm going to do I have written one console application here. First of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system dot threading or task. Then there is a class name program that has main method which here. First of all, I have printed this statement. Then what I'm doing, I'm just calling this call main async method. Here I'm just calling call main async method in main method. What is the call main async method? It is a async method where I am just calling my async method one and my async method two. Then what I am doing, I am just going to use this task dot when all method mentioning task one comma task two. So it will wait until task one and task two gets complete. Then if there is any error that we are going to capture into the catch block with the help of exception class. Here I have written exception. Exception we are going to get it. I am just printing the console. See this my async method one. Here I have written int divisor is equal to zero and I am just printing this divisor value into the console window. that's what this my async method one is doing now see my async method two here i have already defined this in divisor is equal to zero here i'm dividing in by divisor ideally it should throw the error so this statement console dot right line i whatever the i value it's supposed to get should not get print because session will throw on and <coughs> it will be catched into this catch block it's but if you notice my async method two if one method is turning the exit my async method two is only having the exception. My async method one is not in that case. However, the exception that we are going to receive, this exception class is going to capture it perfectly because there is only one exception. Let me go and execute this program and show this output. Okay, if you see demo number two, efficient exception in task got printed and divisor value zero print. This value got printed from my async method one. My async method two, it thrown the error. What error it thrown? Thrown. Tempted to divide by zero. Which line number it got appeared? So those information it is just printed. So here, even though I am not using this aggregate exception class, we are just using exception class itself. We are able to capture it correctly. Let's suppose there is multiple task. We are waiting for them, and it's very difficult. It's not possible to catch all this exception. For that, there is a different trick. We are going to do that. We'll be seeing in demo number three. Now let's see the demo number three, where I am showing the efficient exception in task. The same program, whatever we had in demo number two. I have just little bit modified over here. What modification I have done? So this main method is as it is. The thing is I have written demo number three. In call main async method, what I have done? I have just, you know, created an object of aggregation task. I have assigned null value to it. What one statement I have written? Task aggregation task is equal to null. Here I am just calling my async method one as a part one, my async method two as a part two. Then just calling this when all method task one comma two and just signing this method outcome into aggregation task. I have created in line number Nine. Then I'm just making sure that this aggregation task wait till task one and gets complete. That's what I have written. Wait aggregation task over. Then in catch exception, I have written action e. Then I have written aggregation task question mark dot exception mark dot inner exception not equal to null and aggregation dot dot exception dot inner exception dot any. Then then what I'm doing? Just looping with the help of for each. For each, what I have written? Where inner e x in aggregation task dot inner exception. Basically, let's suppose. Task one and task two throw some error. Those error will be aggregated into inner exception that we are going to retrieve it with the help of forage loop. So one by one exception we are retrieving and printing into the console window with the help of console dot write line. Inside that I have written inner ex dot map. Whatever the exception message is there, it is going to get printed into the console. Window. Now if you see this my async method one here, I am just throwing some error. How I am going to throw the error? Because here I have defined int divisor is equal to zero and I am dividing with the help of zero 
throw only nothing but the divisor of course it is just going to throw some error so my async method one will be throwing some error similarly my async method two also will be throwing that error here i'm just divided 10 by divisor nothing but the zero over e. both my async method one and my async method two are going to throw the error those error we are going to capture into the exception side and then we are retrieving it with the help of for each and printing the console that's how this program is constructed let me go and execute this program and show this output okay so output got appear into console bit. see demo number three efficient exception handling in task got printed attempt to divide by zero got printed by my async method one similarly my async method two also thrown the sub error and that error also got printed attempted to divide okay so let's see the demo number four here we are going to show you how to handle exception in the test task and task with timeouts first of all what i have done i have created one console application named efficient exception handling in task demo that has program.cs in program.cs file first of all i have added necessary name spaces like using system using system.threading.task then there is a class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application and in main method first of all i'm just printing this state demo for handling exception in detached task and task with timeouts here what i have done i have created detached autonomous task for that what i have written task.factory start new try block i'm doing i'm just simulating some operation that's what i am just printing this statement console.write line detached task in run it test task is running then i'm simulating some exception how i'm going to simulating i'm just throwing throw new invalid operation exception detached task encounter and Error. Whatever the error I'm throwing, I'm just going to capture into the cat block. Exception ex, and then I'm just printing this statement into console window. Test task caught an exception. Whatever the message we have thrown, the help of this invalid operation exception class, we are going to capture it and print it into console window after concatenating with this state. That's how this detest autonomous task is doing. Now come to the next task that I have created. This task is going to wait upon a, with a timeout. That what I have done. Task int calc is equal to task dot factory dot start new. Here I have written in divisor is equal to zero. Then I am simulating some long running calculation over. In order to simulate what I have done, I have used this delay method task dot delay two thousand dot wait. Then finally I am just simulating some exception. Here I am simulating a divide by zero exception because I have written return seven divided by divisor. Divisor is nothing but zero over. E. It is just going to simulate a divide by zero exception over. Right? Then there is a try state. Here what I am doing, I am just checking if calc dot wait is equal to one thousand. Just going to wait for one second. Then, if the task completed within the timeout, then this statement is going to get printed. Dot right line result of calc calc dot result. Not, then it is just going to print this statement calculation timed out in console window and all these error that we are going to get it we are going to capture into this aggregate exception ex then just printing into this console window what error we received as a part of aggregation exception is going to access ex dot inner exception dot message and concatenating with this statement task with timeout hot and exception. Right? finally i'm just printing program complete this is how i have constructed this program let me go and execute this okay so output got appear into this console see demo number four got printed handling exception in detached task and task with timeouts right the test task is running got printed the test task caught an exception test task encounter and addition timeout got printed and finally this statement got printed program complete right that's how we are going to handle exception in the test task and task with timeouts okay that brings me to end up my session today sum up in this video we saw efficient exception handling in parallel programming with task in c -sharp. by understanding how to handle exception gracefully and employing the best practices we can ensure the reliability stability of our application that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video